conditions are a central feature of the workflow task and they are found in their properties. They allow the system to evaluate certain situations before and after execution and trigger behaviors as a result. If the condition exists, its value is set to true, otherwise it's set to false. Conditions are adept at validating external situations like the existence of a file, the presence of a console message, an active system process, or active application. There's a wide range of actions to include blocking tasks, executing objects, waiting for a certain amount of time, or canceling the workflow. Preconditions are verified prior to task execution, and post conditions are verified after. An example might be a file watcher mechanism. If a file is found in a directory, the task executes. If not, it waits, say, five minutes, and the condition is checked again. We have created a workflow for this demo. Let's open it. We use the preconditions of the second task. We access its properties. To build a condition, we have three groups, conditions, actions, and finally. Under conditions, we find the list of conditions we can check. Check that an agent connection is alive, check file, check active process, check current time, and more. Under actions, we have the list of actions that the system can execute. Under finally, we find what we call final actions. In other words, actions that signal the end of the condition evaluation and let the workflow proceed. To use any of these, we drag and drop them in the space on the right where it says Insert Condition or Action. For our condition, we use Check Files since this makes for an effective example. When this happens, Atomic Automation builds a sequence of Condition Check and Action. The if statement indicates the condition check and finally shows the final action to be taken if the condition check returns true. By default, it inserts a run task action to let the task run. The else statement is the action to be taken if the check returns false. This is empty. It's up to us to insert the action we want. Conditions and actions are designed using specific fields. In this case, we need to indicate the name and location of the file, the condition, in other words, whether it exists or not, the name of the agent, since we have the option of checking files on remote systems. When doing so, we need to specify a login object so we're authenticated on that system. Every block in the condition has a menu which makes it possible to verify the condition only once, driving the types of actions we can take, or in a repeated manner. We can also copy a block, disable it, or remove it entirely. Let's click on the condition block. A dialog opens, prompting you for field data, file name, agent, and so forth. Note two things. First, you can use wildcards like the star symbol. Second, another condition type would prompt for different fields, ones that are specific to that type of condition. We set the information, we'll use the local agent. Star own means it should use the agent where this workflow was submitted. We enter the file location and name, the exist condition, and star own for the login object, in other words, the login under which the workflow was submitted. Note that all fields are required. If you omit one, the system will inform you. For the final action, we keep run task. This means the task runs if the condition is true because the file exists. If it doesn't, the condition returns false, and we need to specify the resulting action in the else statements. Available actions include change queue, start an object, or set variable. For our purposes, we want the condition to be reevaluated. You can either enter a hard time or a wait period. We specify five minutes.
Let's recap. Prior to executing the workflow task, the precondition checks for a file in the same system. If it exists, the task is allowed to run and the evaluation ends. If not, reevaluate once in five minutes. Let's execute the workflow and see what happens. The jobs are set to sleep for 30 seconds, so we'll move through this process at an accelerated speed. The task assumes a blue waiting for precondition status, since this file does not exist. Let's head to Windows Explorer and create the expected file. We now wait about 5 minutes for the task to be re-evaluated. We'll fast forward through this process. Notice the time will return in 5 minutes. Five minutes have gone by, the condition was checked, saw the file, and returned true. The task is able to execute. When using conditions, reports associated with workflow tasks in waiting statuses conveniently provide some information on what is expected. Conditions are evaluated sequentially. It means that each block is considered one after the other and the system reacts accordingly. Irrespective of where you place the final condition, this will be the last block considered by the system. Final actions are limited, there are exactly four. Block, cancel the workflow, run the task, or skip the task. Obviously, from the perspective of operational processing, each outcome is very different. But what these four have in common is they ensure a hard stop to the condition check, letting the workflow proceed one way or another. Because it is vital that we avoid endless condition checking loops that would hold up the workflow indefinitely, a final action is always required in preconditions. We recommend using them in postconditions as well, so that operations are not tied up by atomic automation. Condition checks and actions can be nested with AND, OR, and ELSE IF statements. We'll show the two most common ones, AND and OR. In this first example, we have a file condition at the top. You'll have the ability to drag and drop a second condition block and a yellow line will appear. The placement of that line determines the type of statements. If you slide a condition check in the IF block, you add an AND IF block because both conditions need to be true and can each have their own ELSE block. In our color-coded example, we have one file check condition in the blue color and a brown process check condition in the same if block. Both need to return true for the final action in the green color to execute. If either returns false, the entire if block returns false, and the system considers the else block defined for both condition checks in red. The OR condition check operates along the same principle, except this time we insert the condition check in an entirely separate space below the first IF block. In this example, we have a blue file check, which should be re-evaluated if it returns false. If it returns true, the action is final. Run the task. We also have a separate brown process check with a silver ELSE block instructing the system to block the task. The action would be final. The OR statement means that if prior to executing the workflow task, the file exists, or if Notepad is running, we execute the green final run task action.